In the course of applying for EB2 or EB1A, I've seen several petitioners who have made several mistakes right during the application. I've also seen many people who have been delayed because they have no idea of what happens in the course of the application. I've also seen individuals who work with consultants or work with lawyers and they eat a roadblock because they have no idea of what happens next to them. And I've also seen individuals who embark on the journey not even knowing exactly what are the next steps they are going to take only for them to get to the middle of the road and they give up along the line. And the last set of people are those people who have always wanted to apply for EB2 or EB1 and they have no idea of what it entails. And because of that, they've not been able to do it for over a year now and they, are just, they just keep on postponing it because they just have no, they don't have no, any idea. So in this particular video, what I will be doing is that I'll be taking you through the journey of every step you have to take from the beginning till you get your green card to give you clarity on what you have to do and when you have to do them. And when I'm taking you through each of those steps, what I'll also be doing is I'll be pointing you in the direction of materials that you need to go and look out for when you are completing that particular step. So this type of video is a do-it-yourself video. It's a guide that takes you one by one from a novice to a level where you have a full understanding of the process itself. I'm aware that several people want to use consultant or a lawyer. For example, today, yeah, people come to us and they said we should help them in the course of the application, which is fine. But what I keep on telling people, that's why we advocate for a do-it-yourself approach, is that though you want to engage a consultant like us, though you want to engage a lawyer, right, it does not take away the point of your ignorance, yeah? If you are ignorant and you outsource this whole work to someone, your likelihood of survival of, of success is not as much as if you have a knowledge of the process. But let me tell you one of the biggest advantages of knowing this process now is that if you know the process, even before you engage a consultant or before you engage a lawyer, you begin to take steps, right? You begin to gather your document because you already have an idea of some steps you are going to take. You don't have to wait for individuals before you even know the fees of what you have to pay. So you have an understanding of the process itself. So this is the reason why we put this guide together and you will realize and actually have like an offer for whoever watches this video and you will understand that in the course of you watching this video, right? As you know, like I always do, I have something juicy for you. So let's get right there into the uh, process. So this is a do-it-yourself guide, remember? It's an end-to-end -end journey of the EB2 NIW or the EB1A, right? And I'll be taking you through the 18 steps, right? Ground off from the beginning till the end, right? And please get your pen, right? get your paper and begin to take a note because you will need this. And before I go further, what I wanted to do is that please subscribe to this channel. That is all you have to do to say thank you to us for a job well done. Subscribe to this channel, hit that bell so that you always get notification when we have content like this. This is your go-to material. This material that I'm sharing with you now is the starting point of your journey to successful application. So let's go further, right? What is the first step that you take? Right now, before I tell you the first step, let me just clarify something here. When you are applying, whether it is EB1 or EB2 NIW, there are two steps that you take. Most people don't know that there are two steps that you take. There is this first step where you do you get your I-140 petition together. When you hear this I-140, it is just a form that you fill. However, because it is a petition where you fill the form. There are some requirements you have to meet. So you have to put some documentation together, attach some evidence to support the requirement to show that you meet those requirements. This is why we call it like a petition. So you are petitioning using that form that you fill to USCI. That's the first stage that you go to. When you go to this first stage, right, and this first stage is finally approved, there are now steps that you take. Now, it is either you are in the United States. This is for people in the United States. Or this are uh, now this pathway you take if you're outside the United States. If you are currently in the United States, now you go through what we call the I-4485, which is adjustment of status. Imagine currently maybe you're a student and you apply for EB-29W 
and you are approved. It means you need to adjust your status from your current student status now to get your green card. That is the pathway you take before you now get your green card. Now, if you are outside the United States, now what happened is that you have to go through what you call the consular processing, which means you have to go through the embassy of your current country in which you are staying legally. Now, that those are the two steps that you take today, right? And I will now be breaking this down, yeah, for you from beginning till the end. And you will realize that this is what you have been asking for. So now, the first step to take, right, in this your, your 18 steps journey to successful EB2 or EB1 application is for you to understand the EB2 NIW process. Understanding becomes important. And I want you to tell you this one. This is very important. Now, you need to have an understanding of the requirements of the EB2 or EB1. Now, if you don't spend your time to understand the requirements of the EB2, EB1, you will struggle in the course of your application. And if you want to use a lawyer, even if you don't want to use a consultant, what happens is that you are not able to be more effective or more productive if you use a consultant, consultant if you don't have understanding of the requirement of the EB2 NIW. Now, go back to my previous video where I try to point you in the direction of where you can get a lot of materials that you need to read for the EB of for the requirement for EB2 or EB1. I've done some videos in the past. Check the playlist that this video is being attached. You will see a lot of those videos. Now, YouTube can really help you here, right? You see a lot of content on YouTube and our playlist is okay for you. We also have a community, it's a thriving community. We have a thousand people in that community. It is one of the biggest green card community in the world on, 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 on online. So I want you to click a link at the end and I will show you at the end. Click the link and join our thriving community. You need to understand the requirement because understanding the requirement is the prerequisite for you to be able to do this yourself and save yourself thousands of dollars. Today, you have to spend between $6,000 to $10,000 if you have to go and consult a lawyer or consultant to get this done for you. However, if you spend your time to know this whole process yourself, you can save yourself these tons of money. That is your first step. Now, the second step that you need to take is what I call making a decision on your proposed endeavor. Now, why I'm putting this as your critical second step is that I've reviewed several cases that have gone to the AO, that is the body that judges cases when they have denial. I've we come to realize that more than 70% of application is actually based on the endeavor that are being rejected, it's based on the endeavor, which means that you need to make a decision on your endeavor for your EB2 NIW. The same way, if you're applying for EB1 as an example, you know, there are 10 requirements. You need to know which of the three out of the 10 requirements you are going for. It could be requirement one, it could be two, it could be requirement four. Yours could be requirement one, two, three, four, seven, eight. You could have like three, four, five, six of them. I always recommend that you have more than three requirements. You need to know specifically which of these requirements do you meet today in such a way that you now begin to take the next step on that. If you don't have an idea of the requirement that you meet for the EB1, if you don't have an idea of your kind of endeavor you are going for, for EB2, then what happens is that your next step of the journey becomes bad for you, right? So do your research to understand the endeavor, but you cannot do this if you don't do this, right? Understand the process, then decide on your endeavor. Now, what is the third thing? Now, the third thing you need to do is to write a detailed CV. Now, the detailed CV becomes key, right? Now, the reason why most people that don't write it eat a roadblock along the line of the application is that the CV helps you to put your best together on a document, right? There's a video you might also see here. Or you can also check the playlist. I did a video on the 10 things you need to write on your CV. There are no specific format for it. It's just a way of putting your the best of your life together as it aligns to your endeavor. Remember, anything you are doing should be linked to this, your proposed endeavor. That becomes important. Now, remember, for example, things like maybe an header on your CV might be something like speaking engagement. Another header might be your certification. 
another either might be membership or professional association another either might be like an award i spoke about 10 of them in my previous video go get a video on the playlist and you will be fine if you don't get your cv together a detailed cv the cv could be as much as eight pages nine pages ten pages i don't care for example all your press appearances also put that on, on, on an heading on that cv now if you don't do this you will also struggle along the line now so go get that video and watch the 10 things and prepare your cv now when you prepare your cv you know your endeavor you understand the process already now the next thing that you do is to begin to gather your evidences evidence becomes important it's not just a matter of this is who i am right it's not just like you saying i'm an hr manager it's not just you saying i'm a compliance officer i'm a software developer what are the evidences to back them up now, if you say you have spoken in conferences, what evidences do you have for those conferences? Do you have invitation letter? For example, do you have certificate of an attendance for that particular speaking engagement? Do you have the pictures of the in, in that speaking engagement where you're speaking to the audiences? Do you have where you have been given maybe a plaque or an award, right, in that particular uh, program in which you spoke? Now, these are some of the evidences you need to have. For example, if you say you command salary, do you have record of your pay slip as an example? Do you have record of your letter of promotion? You want to get all these your evidences together. Now, having this first four is like your first level of taking the next step on your journey. Now, let's go to the step five. Now, the step five is that when you get your document together, you need to organize your documents. Now, picture if you have done a project before, maybe you have written tests in school before, you will realize that having references is not just enough. You need to arrange your references. Now, when you get to the point of exhibit, let me give an example. If what you're applying for is like EB2 and IW, put your document in different folders. Now, put your document in a folder for advanced degree. You have a folder for prong one. You have a folder for prong two. You have a folder for prong three. Now, all the evidences you want to use, right, to support each of these requirements, you put them in each folder. Imagine you're trying to apply for EB, EB1 as an example. Then you have maybe out of the 10 evidences, you want to go for five. Now, each of these five, label them and begin to put the evidences that is linked to them, begin to put them there. For example, let's assume you are going for evidence eight under the EB1A, which says that you command high salary or remuneration. Then you need to get things like your pay slip, uh, things like letter of promotion, things like your offer letter, things like your tech certificate. You get them and put them in that folder that you want to use for evidence eight. This is how you organize your exhibit. Now, if you can do that, you will realize that it will help your journey all the time. Do not skip this step. When you skip this step, right, because you are trying to move fast, now you're going to make mistake along the line and your chances of being successful becomes low. It is accuracy before speed. Make sure you get it right before you go fast. Get it right before you get it fast. Again, get it right before you get it fast. Now, when you're done with this, what you need to do next is that you need to have like expert letters, what you call maybe letter of recommendation, right? At this point, do not write the letter. and I, I will explain to you why you should not write the letter. However, at this point, create a Microsoft Word document and itemize the list of possible people that you want to write your letter for you. People that you know, people that are not too close to you and begin to speak with them to give them an heads up in terms of what you want them to write for you. At that point, please do not write yet for several reasons, which I'm going to explain. However, at this point, get the list of those people, look at their profile, get their profile together. If you can get them on LinkedIn, get them on LinkedIn and put their profile together and look at top one among them that can write for you. Maybe your lecturer in school, maybe your dean, maybe your professor, maybe your course advisor, maybe your former manager, maybe your former CEO, maybe your HR manager, maybe a client you have worked with before. List them one by one in different category and look at their profile and pick which one of them you want to write a letter for you. Any one of them that is very close to you, speak with them and let them know that you are coming with them with a draft of a letter for them to sign for you. Now, when you are done with this, go to the next stage. Now, the next stage is draft a cover letter now this is where you put your package together this is the package itself this is now where you begin to write based on the requirement that uscis actually want now at this point you can try to find an access to get templates for example get templates at this point 
because templates might help you a lot that might make your life easy if you don't have a template just follow a particular structure if you belong to a community like us we share uh, a format on the structure in which you can write your document if you want to do that you can join our community we we'll share that with you so you can have a, a an access like the cover letter you follow that reference or exhibit that you have done here you can see there's a linkage between this and this because if you don't have this you can if you don't have exhibit you cannot be say you are writing letter right because when you write your letter you make a reference to your exhibit so writing letter without an exhibit is just an exercise in futility use some templates you don't have to use the templates in terms of copy and paste there's not no particular format that uscis is expecting you to write your letter however there are some kind of structure that helps your document to be very easy to read and easy to follow which might increase your your probability of being successful now when you do that because when you're writing your letter you'll be quoting something that you want your expert to write because most times from who have what i've seen so far most people write or draft the letter for their expert right and so you will have quoted some things you want to see in your letter from your cover letter use that to write your letter of recommendation and give it back to the, your expert to write for you and they can sign if they change one or two things for for in in that letter which you have referenced here just come back here and edit that and you are very much good to go this now means that this with the exhibit with the letter of recommendation or expert letters that you are good to go with your package now when you are done with that what is the next thing that you do the next thing that you do is that you come straight you come straight and you fill all forms now one mistake you must not make several people have been rejected because of this now do not fill your form before you submit do not fill your form before you write your cover letter fill your form when you are about to submit the reason is that some of these forms have been updated right at different times and if you want to fill the form you need to pick the form at the time you want to use the form and any USCIS form, ESCIS form that you fill, always look at the top right corner. There's always an expiry date on the form. Be sure that the form is still current. Now, I've shared a video before now on how to locate all the forms, right? All the forms by USCIS. Go online, USCIS website, and type forms. You're going to see a list of several forms. Fill the one applicable to you online print it out and fill the form and make sure that you sign the form ensure you sign all your forms if you don't sign your form if a particular part is missing in your form which you are meant to sign i did not sign you are going to get automatic rejection of your package now when you do that the next thing you do the same way make a payment right and on a payment again is one of the ways where people get rejection also there are formats for payments there are payments you don't combine together. For example, you don't combine your I-140 payment and combine it with your premium processing payment, right? There's a way USCIS expects you to, to do your payment. Now, this is available online. Now, there are several modes of payment today. You can do a credit card. You could use postal order. You could also use your, your check right today. Now, if you are applying from United States, you could use your debit card or credit card. If you are applying outside United States, USAID do not recommend that you use your card. I've seen one successful case where somebody uses the, used the card outside US and it went through, but I've seen more rejection of people who use uh, bank cards outside the US and they get rejection. Please, in this one, use US cards, right? I want to recommend that with you. Now, if you want to use the postal holder, what you need to do is that get someone in the US, send the money to them, they get the, they, they get the, the order, issue to you to department of Homeland security they can send it to you through dhl put it in your package and send it to uscis now there are several ways to do that i can talk about that later on after this point the next step you take when you are submitting your document is to pay for premium processing now we are submitting this document the two can actually go together or you can pay for this afterwards for some people they don't choose to go for premium processing because they are not under pressure but for several people, they do the premium processing. If you want to do premium processing, then it means that you need to pay it as part of this package when you are sending it and also fill the form for the premium processing. When you are done with that step, then it now goes to the USCIS. USCIS receives this form. 
Now, what happens afterwards is that USCIS will give you, right, a notice of action, which means they've received your documents and now is noted for action. Then they will give you a receipt number and they will give you a priority date. Priority date is the date that USCIS receive your document and it gets into their system. This is the date you are going to be using going forward to compare with the visa bulletin. If you don't have an idea of visa bulletin, my last three videos spoke about the visa bulletin. Now, when USCIS process your documents, there are four things that can happen. Yeah, not in any particular order. Number one, USCIS could decide to look at your documents and reject your documents. Rejection is not denial. Now, rejection could be things I've mentioned. Maybe your payment is not complete. Maybe you combine your payment together. Maybe you did not fill the form properly. Maybe the form that you use is also like an outdated form, right? Maybe you didn't pay for your asylum, for example. If you're an individual and you're watching this video, ensure you pay the $300 asylum fees. Most people are forgetting it. They are not aware of that. And because of that, they get rejection. I've seen two rejection in the last three months since they introduced that asylum fees because people are not aware that they are meant to pay the asylum fees. Now, so they could reject you. Now, the second thing they could do is what we call request for ev evidence, which is called RFE. Now, it could it's possible that when they receive your documents, maybe they, they need, maybe, for example, maybe they need your educational transcript. Maybe you didn't attach your transcripts and they need more evidences. Now, they will write you a letter and they will give you a time frame for you to respond to that evidence. That means they need more evidence from you before they can make judgment on your case. That's one of the things that could happen to you. Now, the other thing that could happen to you is what we call denial. Denial means your case closed, which means we deny you, you don't meet the requirement, nothing at all, you don't meet that. Maybe sometimes it happens after first RFE, second RFE, and they give you notice of denial and they deny you entirely. Now, they could deny you. Deny, deny means case closed, except you want to go to court because you think that you meet the requirement. That is the only thing that can happen. If not, what happens straight is that the case is closed. The final one is approval. Approval is they introduce your petition that you drafted here, and they check you versus the requirements and they realize that you are good to go. Then what happens here is that they mark you and they give you an approval. Now, approval means that, yes, you meet all the requirements, your package is correct, everything is intact, then you are approved. Now, when you are approved, what is the next thing that happens? Now, the next thing that happens is there are two options. The option is either are you abroad or you are in the United States. Let me take first, if you, you are in the United States, if you are in the United States, I put your color in green. Now, if you are in the United States, what happens is that if your visa bulletin is current, which means when you get to a point where your priority date and the visa bulletin date aligns together, then you file for adjustment of status, which means I'm changing from my current status to the green card route. That is for you. Now, for people who are in the United States also, maybe you're doing EB1 as an example, the same thing you apply for the adjustment of status. Now, that form is called I-485. If you go to USCIS website today and you Google I-485, you will see that document. It is for adjustment of status. Now, after that, you go to the next step, which I will talk about when I come back. So those that are outside the United States will still come back and meet us here. Now, if you're outside the United States, what happens is that USCIS, when they approve your documents, they send their documents to your host country. For example, if you are a Nigerian and you are resident in Nigeria, when, while you are filling your I-140 form, you will have specified that you want to go through the consular processing. So when they approve your document, they send your package to your host country, to the embassy in your host country that will now get in touch with you. Now, when they send the document to your host country, Depending on the timeline of the visa bulletin, they don't notify you immediately. For some people, it could be six months to when their visa bulletin will be current before they send it to them. For some people, they might get it way, way earlier, but they probably most times send it between six months and nine months to when your visa bulletin will be current. Now, if you are, for example, EB1, right, most likely you will get it like on time, depending on the efficiency of the US consular 
in your current country. Okay, so when this happens today, now the embassy, many things happen within this period, right? They send you a message, you are collecting message, now they send you a link for you to make a payment, you upload some document there, when you upload the document, they go through it, they are satisfied, then they call you for an interview. So you go for, for, for the interview at the consulate. When you go to the interview, you are successful at the interview, what happens next is that you now go to the next stage. Now, when you are when you are approved, then what happens is that on your visa, what happens that on your passport, what happens is that they stamp your passport and give you a temporary visa that will take you to the United States, which means you are almost having your green card. However, between this period and this period, when you get your visa to travel to the United States, you are going to make a payment for your green card. Now, the one you have on your passport is not your permanent residency. However, it shows that you already have permanent residency and waiting for collection in the United States. So you make a payment, I think it's like $250 thereabout. Then you make that payment. Then you when you get to United States in the address you specify, the moment you get to the uh to the to the border and you are stamped in, the system triggers you, which means that it says that you're already in the United States. Then your green card is now issued and sent to you and you get your green card. Now, for those in the United States that file adjustments of status, they also go from there and get their U.S. green card. As you can see, these are the steps that you take today from beginning to the end for you to get your green card. Now, do not skip this step. I want you to understand this step one by one. And in each of these steps, there are things that you need to do. However, one thing I want you to take note of in this my conversation is that as much as possible, this part is one of the most important. You need to spend your time to have good knowledge, a very sound knowledge about this whole process. If you don't have knowledge about this whole process, if you don't spend time, effort, energy, to read this whole process, then what happens is that anything you do along the line, you might be skipping the step, you might be making a lot of errors, and you get confused along the line, and you give up on it. There are several people out there today who meet requirements for EB2 or EB1, and they are just not ready, right? Because they think it's a complex process. I've broken them down for you, and I'm sure that it really makes sense to you overall in terms of how we go about this now remember right right to click that button remember to subscribe to this channel because this particular content right is a big one for you and i'm sure that's going to help several people out there if you want to email us you feel like oh we just support you in this journey right you feel like maybe this looks still a bit complex for you and you need that support reach out to us through us green card at triplelam.io you can see that on your screen and we have a large community today. You can imagine this kind of content. People in our community ask questions today and they get answers to that question. You can join our community by following what you see on your train. Linktree forward slash peoplelab.io. You will see opportunity for you to join the community for US Green Card. And these are the things that we offer today. There are several things. Now, guys, you could see I've broken this down to you one by one from beginning till the end the choice is now yours this is your do-it-yourself approach that will help you faster that will help your journey with right quality and that will increase your possibility of being approved at the end now there are several opportunities out there today several people meet this requirement but you're scared you feel like i can't do it this is why sometimes you can speak to individuals to help you today we support people and we offer several services one of them today is, if you need the support end-to-end -end from beginning of this journey till the end, from the knowledge part till you get to the end for approval, you can speak with us, we offer that. If you think you have some knowledge enough, you save yourself some money, you put your packet together, you just need somebody to help you review your document, you can also speak to us, we can help you review your document. Maybe you have used somebody else, you have used a lawyer, or you have used yourself, and you got an RFE. And you don't have confidence in what you have done before and you feel like i think these guys know it better and we can help you package your rfe to respond to uscis it might be your last chance to give it a shot that is the third thing that we do today 
Now, the final one that might be applicable to almost everyone that watches this video is what we call Clarity Call. Today, tens of people out there are benefiting and saving themselves money by having what we call Clarity Call with us. That is a personalized assessment with you where you get to ask any question. It's a 75 minutes call that you have with us that you can easily book. If you are interested in that, email us usgreencard at peoplelearn.io. It is like your personal assessment where you get to ask questions about your profile, about the way to go about your application, and it can save you three months to six months of you wasting your time and energy. But before you have that session, spend your time to watch a lot of videos on our playlist because it's going to make that 75 minutes very tangible for you. So guys, I have one good information for you, right? So you see the content I just shared with you, right? That content is actually a preview of our course. So we're just launching our EB2 NIW Do-It-Yourself course, which is launch launching in the next few weeks. However, we're giving opportunity to our viewers. We are giving opportunity for people in our community, right, to be part of the early beds, right, for you to enjoy a whooping discount, right, from the fee, right? Now, for you to enroll in that course today, it costs you over $200, right? Because it's a do-it-yourself course that is saving you thousands of dollars. Now, it doesn't stop there. There are several benefits you're getting. One of the benefits is that you get to have a session with me every month, right? Which I will be supporting people who are doing the application by themselves. So which means we have a session together, you get to ask your questions. It's a live session where you can throw your question, you get an answer real time. You are also going to be part of my close community where you get to ask questions specific to your own application and you get an answer to that. Now, the third thing you'll be benefiting in that particular course is that you will have access to templates. You have access to a sample document right, that have been used before now for an application. So you can see how people craft their stories. Now, it gives you confidence on the way you can go about your document. Now, these are the things you'll be enjoying by buying that course. Buying that course is one of the cheapest things you would do. However, if you fill the form, if you fill the link, we'll be dropping below with this document. If you fill the link and you show that you want part of the early bed, you are getting a big discount. Yeah, it's actually a very big discount. So do not miss that. For those that missed our masterclass in January, many of you have called for several sessions and we said, no, 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 no way. We are not having any masterclass anymore. Now the course is here. Do not miss the early bed. When you miss the early bed, you know what we do? We keep to our words. That's why the fact that many of you have called for to do the masterclass again, we said, no way. We only give opportunity to those that trust us. And that is what we try to do. So this is people up. I know the way we do it. It is always with high quality. Remember what we say in people arm, yeah? Like your dreams are valid. And we are here to always support you to get to where you want to be. So if you want to be part of this train, you're interested in ev 2 please get ready, fill that form, and be part of the early bed and subscribe to that particular call. That is your own commitment to show that you trust us on this your journey. So guys, I wish you guys the best, right? Always together. You could see this is a juice to you, right? This is like a preview. And you can see the quality of the content that you'll be getting. And you will see more of that when you enroll in that particular course. So guys, thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Bye.